Hey everybody, Dan from IntrinsicSwing.com here and this week's video is going to be talking about where the swing actually ends. Now this is an important concept um, that I think most golfers do incorrectly. I actually think that most golfers, if you were to ask them where does the golf swing end, I think they would give you one of two answers uh, that are both incorrect. I think some golfers would tell you that the golf swing ends at the top of your backswing, wherever your finish is. And I think other uh, golfers might say that the swing ends when the club gets to the golf ball. Actually, in my opinion, neither one of those two things is true. To really determine where the swing ends, we have to talk a little bit about how the kinetic chain functions in the body and what that means in regards to how we move a golf club. Now, in the intrinsic swing system, it's based on those two core fundamentals of uh, not manipulating the club and uh, learning how to create or to power the club correctly through creating rotational force. Okay, those are kind of the two big umbrella concepts that cover everything in, in this system. So, with that in mind, if you think about how uh, the body creates rotational force in order to move other objects, I think about how we throw a, a ball. I think that's the closest thing that we do uh, physically that replicates how we should be moving the golf club. Now, if you think about how you were going to throw a ball, you would not take all of the pieces of your body, wind them up together, and then unwind them together. It doesn't really work like that. We shift a little bit of weight. There's a, a stride, so there's a pressure change. The hips begin to lead. The hips pull the torso. Torso pulls the arms. And eventually, everything kind of catches up to this line of action where you are trying to uh, direct the momentum. So what I mean by that is, uh, when I go to throw, I don't turn in a circle and just release my hand at some uh, random point trying to steer it. All of your rotational force is applied in the direction of where you're trying to create speed. Okay. Now, furthermore, if you think about how the kinetic chain works, in order for energy to pass from one segment of the body to the next, it requires a series of accelerating and then decelerating parts. And it's not something that needs to be overthought too much. Your body already knows how to do this. But if you notice, if I was going to throw, my hips lead the way until they start to reach an end of their natural range of motion. And that's going to be different for everybody based on age, flexibility, fitness level, uh, just how your body is designed individually. There's lots of different things that, that can affect that. But the idea is that my hips can only go so far. They don't just keep turning like the exorcist. That's how I like to talk about that in my live lessons. Your hips will lead the way. They will sort of end this range of motion. And once this piece then starts to decelerate, it actually begins to hyper-accelerate the piece behind it until that piece catches up to this line of action where your hips have initially started to slow down. Mm -hmm.